And for those who might say, oh, wait, what about those gaps? <laughs> if you're gonna intonate and play with good legata, and God, we have paddle for this, <laughs> everything will be fine. If you're an advanced pianist, you might think that um, fingering is the last thing that can improve your piano technique and your playing. But on the contrary, it's the fundamental part of your practicing that you should never underestimate. Uh, just give you a little story. In my, uh, I think, what it was high school years, I uh, started writing down fingering. You know, it's kind of dismissed because you, you think, okay, you're a professional pianist, you practice eight hours a day since you are five years old, so why would you think about fingering? Why would you write down fingering? You should be master at this already, and so because you need to focus on the bigger things, but fingering is something that eventually you kind of come back <laughs> two uh, after maybe 10 or 15 years of gap um, and I remember when I started writing down fingering one of nice people um, actually came to me and said why would you need to write down fingering like are you, are you stupid I mean you should be good enough to play without writing down fingering um, but I still felt that I need it <laughs> okay maybe maybe <laughs> Maybe I'm not good enough, so I need to write down my fingering. And later I found out that actually many, oh, come on, nine students out of ten have the same problems. So that's why I'm making this video. Uh, so there are a few reasons you want to choose and write down correct fingering. Correct fingering helps your hand avoid excessive tension, because while playing you change hand positions less frequently, uh, you can play more notes, in one position and you avoid keeping your hand in a stretch position so for example here not a big deal you know of course it's just seven you can just reach it but versus this sounds much it feels much effortless it's a small thing but if you use intonation and we have pedal <laughs> It really helps you. Um, also, repeating the piece with the same fingering without changing them each time you play will help you to finish and memorize the piece much faster. Um, this is this is very obvious, but not everyone still remember that. And lastly, while practicing the piece and focusing on the big pictures and tasks, small things like dowsing which finger to use on which key can be very irritating and very distracting. So seeing clearly, written fingering and the score, and practicing with correct fingering from the very first time you touch a new piece um, feels very safe and secure, and it will take away a necessary burden from your mind. So to summarize the main principles of finding the best fingering for your piece, Change positions as least as possible and keep your hands stretched as least as possible. First, I suggest to find positions and mark them with a bracket or a slur. It's up to you. Um, you don't have to do that every time, but if you kind of want to clarify for yourself what are the positions, how to find fingering, with the, with the very first time, I, really, I would really encourage you to do this, just to make it clear in your mind. Um, so as you can see in my score I used slurs. Again, I don't do this for myself, I just did it for the purpose of this video. So that would be one position, and another, and another, and another. Uh, then we're gonna find suitable fingering for each position, and I personally just write down fingering um, on the very first note of each position, because obviously the rest of fingering just kind of uh, fell into place. And um, whenever you have even slightest doubt about the fingering, I suggested, even if it's within the position, I suggested to write it down as well. And 
Lastly, to make a shift or transition from one position to another in a smooth and effortless way, without feeling, you know, tense inside, I would use my elbow. And uh, it's a huge topic that I dedicated very long, super detailed video in the past, and you can find it, it's titled Elbow Technique in Piano Playing. So, when I play, let's say it's the last note of a position, I would just move my elbow first, so the transition would be very effortless and will feel very, very comfortable. Uh, also, I need to talk about uh, different additions. Uh, it's kind of important here. Uh, so sometimes you can find different fingering in a variety of editions and um, very often they are written to uh, not really benefit your technique, but to benefit expressiveness in playing. For example, you know, better legata, you know, with this substitutions of fingering and stuff. Or for a better accent, for example, not play accent with the fifth finger, but with the thumb, you know. Uh, but if you know how to make articulations, how to make good legata through intonation and weight, you don't really need um, any weird and over... What's the word? Overthought, over, overthinking, <laughs> fingering patterns and, you know, substitutions. Um, I'm, I'm not actually saying never look at editions, but rather, you know, don't limit yourself with editor's ideas. Have your own mind. And I myself always prefer to take the very first edition of the piece. If it doesn't have fingering, that's the best. <laughs> um, because it's really less confusing for me. And I don't know, if you experience ever this thing, you have many auditions, like two or three, and you're like, okay, well, this feels right, but this also feels right, but which one I should choose? So, <laughs> I don't like to spend any time for, for these things. Uh, to always make it absolutely clear and secure how to find correct fingering, I always follow four principles, four steps in finding positions and fingering. So, firstly, position is when you can play notes without stretching your hand. Um, because stretching your hand even, you know, to octave, you might say, okay, octave, come on, I can reach octave. But it's not about reaching, it's about stretching your hand. Stretching your hand will cause, will cause tension and fatigue while playing. So position is not, let's say, an octave. Uh, but for me, it's just fifth. So anything that goes beyond fifth, I would take as a new position. Um... I mean, for example, here, <laughs> let's just repeat the example I showed. For example, here, of course, you can stretch. It's not a big deal, just seventh. But for me, I just choose it as a new position. Why would I need to play with this weird fingering when I can just start with the third finger and play effortlessly in one position? So this is one position and this is another position. Oh, oh, for example, here. You see, it's kind of... I can, of course, play it in an open hand, but I can also switch to new position and just play with the third finger. I don't know. Um, sometimes you don't have much choice, actually, and you will have to take an octave as one position, stretching your hand. But, um, for example, here, on the second page. I mean, you can't just all the time play 5-1-5-1, five, one, five, one, so you have to play it in one position. But what will help is maybe sometimes elbow movement, maybe some correct wrist movement, so you wouldn't feel stiff on your wrist, also phrasing. Um, so there are some helping tools <laughs> that can, you know, still relieve this stretching. Um, also, if you have, for example, a slightly new shift 
um, treated also as a new position. Um, for example, okay, for example here. Of course you can say, you can play like this, but I just prefer, even if it's from one note to another, I just move my elbow and I start with the second finger again. So this is one position, and this is another. And uh, so when I'm done with kind of finding positions, now uh, I will switch to marking fingering, and as I said before in the score, I write mostly the fingering on the very first note of each position, but if you have any doubts about fingering on other notes, again, you must write um, everything very clear for yourself. Okay. You don't have to do anything with must, but <laughs> I would strongly suggest. <laughs> and uh, lastly, of course, after I find position and fingering, just like I said in the beginning of the video, I would find um, the transition notes for my elbow movement between positions to make um, shifting very smooth and very fluid. So uh, let's just go over a little bit, um, maybe over the right hand and um, I will just kind of demonstrate what I mean. So this is one position that starts from the second finger and I would move elbow here. Now the next, the next. So as you can see, I'm pretty much moving my elbow in the very last note of each position, but it's not always the same. That's why I made a detailed tutorial about elbow technique. And you see this one is like a one position. But I'm just using my elbow, so it's okay. Oh, what is it? I can see. Okay. And for those who might say, oh, wait, what about those gaps? If you're gonna intonate and play with good legata, and God, we have pedal for this, everything will be fine. And then you, I go on maybe four finger. So this is how it looks in the very first step when I just kind of analyze the piece and break it down to position, fingering, elbow movement. Um, okay, um, I hope that's enough for you to di digest and I really encourage you to go and just practice the same way. Uh, it will help you in the future, I promise. Um, Alright, that's about it. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.